Dr. Winnie King and welcome to Keeping Kids Healthy. Now, this is a program about your children's health and it comes to you right from the lobby of the Children's Hospital at Montefiore in the Bronx. We've heard so much about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in the last 10 years that many parents wonder whether their unmanageable kids have ADHD, as it's also called, or if their kids are just unruly. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at what ADHD is, what it isn't, and what treatments are available. And we begin by meeting a family that lives with ADHD every day. My name is Jane Elizabeth Bunn. I'm eight years old and my brother has ADD and his name is Andrew. Sometimes he behaves a little bit too wild. Jane Elizabeth, okay, I got your stuff off the table, now get it off the floor. Fine. Like sometimes I'll just totally flip out on her if she does something really little. And don't keep putting it on the table. Andrew was diagnosed with ADHD, I think he was age six, and teachers recognized the symptoms and suggested that we have him tested. There are characteristics of ADHD. Andrew exhibits 99% of those. The inability to concentrate, to focus, if he's in a classroom, he will hear someone tapping their foot or tapping a pencil like in the back of the room, and that will totally throw off his concentration. I'm just not good at organization. I usually, I always do the work, and then I wind up losing it, not knowing where it is. He can't really pick up on the cues, any social cues that people might be giving to him. He finds it difficult to know when to be quiet, when to stop talking when to say the appropriate thing or when he's something that he is saying is inappropriate. Jesus Christ, man. I can acknowledge when I'm being annoying and then I'll stop, but usually I, I just don't know how to handle it all the time. And it's very difficult for him to really establish friends and to kind of be one of the guys, even though he has a desperate need for those social connections, it's very difficult for him. Some people, they forget that he has ADHD and sometimes they just can't help it. You know, he was just a fantastic athlete. When Andrew was playing baseball, he wanted to be a pitcher. He had a good eye, he did a fantastic job, and the team would win. <laughs> We gave Andrew a guitar for Christmas. He taught himself how to play. He is very, very artistic. When he was six, he produced a series of paintings that, it's like Picasso. And I, I'm still amazed to this day how lovely they are just for their expression and the form and the colors and the, the texture of his paintings. Well, she typed it? The hardest part of being a parent of a child with ADHD is now you feel that you have a little bit of control and you can kind of help them through things. But in the future, I'm not going to be able to do that. I can't go with them to high school. I can't go with them to college. So I just have to get them ready. And that's the hardest part. And with us now are Michelle Bunn, Jane Elizabeth, and of course, Andrew, whom we just met. And we're also joined by Dr. Stanley Tarecki. Now, he's a renowned child psychiatrist here in New York City and an author of several books, including The Difficult Child. And he's also widely regarded as an expert in dealing with ADHD. And we also have Dr. Bruce Roseman, whose son Joshua has ADHD and who wrote a book about it called A Kid Just Like Me. Now, he was instrumental in building a school for kids who have ADHD and other learning disabilities. And Dr. Roseman himself has been diagnosed with ADHD. And welcome, all of you, to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for letting us come to your house and see how special you are and how wonderful and energetic you are. It must be hard sometimes to really make good friends, huh? Um, yeah, well, we actually moved here a couple of years ago from Atlanta, and I, I feel that they just knew me a lot better and could get used, they were used to my ADHD back there, and it's just going to take them a while to get used to it up here. Yeah, it's hard making those connections. You know, Michelle, you know, we saw a few glimpses of how this impacts the family. It, it's tough, isn't it? It is. It's, it's very tough. And it's the most consuming thing that I do all day. I mean, I have a full-time job, two kids. 
a house, a dog, you know, the whole thing. And it really is the most all-consuming thing that I do all day. Sometimes it's hard separating the kid from the behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things that I try and remember and, and really use as a touchstone are things like Andrew's paintings because he's so gifted and his music and to use those to separate the behavior from the person. Yeah. And I know you have some concerns about this cutie pie sitting right next to you because it does have an impact. It's not just about the child with ADHD. Other children in the family are also impacted. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of behaviors that Andrew can get away with that Jane Elizabeth cannot mm -hmm. get away with. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know that, don't you, Miss Jane? And it's not so much fun, is it? Sometimes it feels like it's a little unfair, doesn't it? Yeah, because like when he um, says bad words, um, when he gets in trouble, he usually gets away with it. But when I'm, like, you know, in trouble and I want to say those bad words and I say them and my mom says, don't say that, but then I bring up, well, you let him say that. That's right, and that's a hard question to answer, too, I know. Now, um, how do your friends react to Andrew? Well, when he does something well, they feel uncomfortable about, they say, your brother is so weird, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, he can't really help it. Yeah, I know. He can't really help it. And it's great that you stick up for him. You know, and Dr. Tarecki, we know that, you know, up to as many as 10% of school-aged children will actually have this diagnosis of ADHD. But let's go through the characteristics of ADHD and how do you make the diagnosis? Well, it's a grouping of problem behaviors that fall into three categories. Difficulty concentrating, attending, focusing. Uh, hyperactivity, being very overactive on the go all the time, restless, fidgety, and poor self-control, impulsiveness, calling out, talking out of turn, acting before thinking. Those are the three broad categories. Uh, they have to be present from before the age of six. In fact, many mothers will tell you that even as a fetus in utero, the child was extremely, extremely active, kicked really? and moved around a lot, yes. Wow. Yes. Difficult baby to change on the changing table. So in other words, if it appears for the first time after the age of six, then it's not ADHD. And the most important feature of it is that it significantly interferes with functioning and relationships. That's probably the most important thing, that it really gets in the way. Now we're going to talk a bit about treatment because I know all of our parents watching want to know about that. But let's talk about what ADHD is not because it's often mislabeled or other problems are thought to be ADHD. Well, I'll tell you a funny story about what it's not. Um, I asked a child of about nine with ADD what he thought it meant. What, and he said, it's attention deficit disorder. And I said, what does that mean? And he says, it means that I don't get enough attention from my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it's not that. Yeah, it's not okay. that you don't get enough attention. It's not underperformance. The reason why it's diagnosed too much, in my opinion, I think it should be more like 3% than 10%, is because there are average children who don't perform well in highly pressured environments and they often are prescribed medication and diagnosed with ADD, whereas in fact they are not. They're just not performing up to par in a highly pressured environment. Sometimes anxious children exhibit fidgetiness and some of the other features, but that's different. That's an anxiety problem. Okay, so there is a big distinction. Well, you brought up an issue that's a really hot topic, and that's the issue of medication for these children. Parents are very frightened at the idea of altering the brain chemistry with drugs. Well, where do you stand on that? Is there a role for, for these medications? There is. Uh, I, I think you have to be careful. You have to be selective. You have to try other things, for example, behavioral management. Often these children children have problems in other areas, such as, um, I think the lady mentioned, a certain lack of social savoir-faire. A group, a latency group, group therapy can be very helpful for that. So medication is only one of the forms of treatment. Uh, when it's used, the basic function of medication is to focus attention. And secondary to that, often the problem behavior diminishes as well. Uh, those are the pros. The medications that are the primary stimulants, like Ritalin and Dexedrine, have been around for 50, 60 years, so we know them very, very well. 
Well, now, uh, Bruce, you wrote a book about this. You have this, and you've also helped build a school for children like your son uh, and like Andrew. But the real issue for you is advocacy, isn't it? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, I think the, the most important things that you need to advocate for is testing and resources services. That's what, that's what people need. Um, under the Federal Disabilities Act, people are entitled to a lot of services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, extra resources in school to be put in uh, smaller classes. And it's sort of a group approach that needs to be taken. It needs to be with the family doctor or pediatrician, the school social worker, the counselor, the teacher. Um, and I think that's what you need to advocate for so, you, so that you can get services. Yeah. Did you find that that was helpful with you, you know, just having the whole uh, team approach to taking care of Andrew? Well, I wish we'd had a team approach to taking a care of Andrew, but it's really been a struggle yeah. with the middle school, and it took months to get an IEP in place, and I had to bring his therapist Now, when you me. say IEP, what do you mean by that? An Individualized Education Program, uh -huh. or a okay. 504 yeah. program, yeah. and it was difficult. It's hard. And how do you feel about all this? I mean, do you feel like, um, I know she, he's been on medication, is yes. that correct? Does medicine help you? Um, usually, most it of usually the, does. most of the time. Yeah, and how do you feel these days? A lot better than I used to. Really? In what way? It's just a lot different up here. I, I actually, I just like being in a new place. Mm -hmm. Kind of, I'm kind, kind of getting used to it now. Yeah, and you feel calmer, like you're able to to really to really do the things that you're supposed to do. How do you think he's doing? <laughs> do you think he's doing good, Jane Elizabeth? Well, he's doing pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Well, coming from a sister, that means an awful lot. So you should take that and be glad because sisters are usually the ones that criticize the most. Thank you so much for being here on the show. I really appreciate all of your comments. And to get more information on ADHD, contact Children and Adults with ADHD. It's CHAD, C-H-A-D-D. -D, and their number is 1-800-233-4050. Their website is chadd.org or akidjustlikeme.com. And that's it for today. I'm Dr. Winnie King, and I'll see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy.